I always get nervous to like <laughs> start. Don't be nervous. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it's it's just it's the starting of the process that I feel like is I find it really difficult to start. Once I'm going, mm. it's easier. But that's like so true with everything though. I mean, it's just making that start. Yep, I'm the same. Um, I'm thinking, oh Lord. <laughs> I'm thinking. Now, Nick's story is much more interesting than mine. Why don't we turn it into turn What are you thing talking out? about? Do you know no, what I'm saying? Though? Absolutely not. Like, like, but I think it, like everyone's story is so important. You know what I mean? Yeah. And everyone can <clears throat> draw something from everyone else's story. And I think like it's important to be more open and share mm. like everyone's story, so we can be more open, so that we have a bit more kind of understanding of one another. I feel mm. like we yeah, some like, of us shared. Mm-hmm experiences mm-hmm. for sure for mm. sure so i'm practicing trying to be more in the moment i like at this part of my life i feel like i'm just trying my default brain will just try and rush through experiences and rush through projects just so i can get it done so i'm trying to be more present in the moment which is a very hard thing to do yes. um so i'm going to do a big deep breath in okay do you want to join I'll me join you okay How was that? Fabulous. Do you, do you meditate? I'm not sure if it's meditation, but breathing exercises, yes. And that's one of them. In through the nose, out through the mouth, mm. and then hold your breath. That's so important, man. Well, your pulse rate goes down, blood pressure goes down, and things seem to become calmer. Mm-hmm. So I'm pleased we started with that. Yeah, that's so good. That well was nice. Hey, <laughs> Very that was nice. nice. Do you do vo- vocal exercises? I don't do vocal exercises. <laughs> no, I won't. Maybe later on. <laughs> just okay. show you some look out. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. I feel like I'm starting on the um, on the breathing exercises. Mm. Maybe I'll add the vocal exercises next on the list. Well, I mean, you're a broadcaster. You might as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, so thank you for being here today. I really appreciate it. Very honoured. It's, um, it's lovely to have you here. Thank you. Um, this is like, for me feels very, very special. Um, Headspace has so kindly helped us to put together this project. Um, and the, the significance of, of that is we get to hear stories from people like yourself, which I think is very important for young people to hear. But also I think it's very personal to me because I went to Headspace also when I was 16 and I felt like I needed a lot of, a lot of guidance and to, to be here today and to work with them and to talk to you um, is so so special. So thank you. Thank you. I'm very honoured, and that's very moving. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Um, I think I was reflecting in the car the other day, and I just, like a lot of young people, have grown up with you just always on the TV, <laughs> and your your voice is just so nostalgic to me. Thank like you. You did um when you were doing your. Um, like the news read before, just before we started the take. Yes. It just felt so bizarre to, to like, <laughs> just to hear it in real life. Um, yes. But my understanding is you have such a story about the journey, about how you got to where you are today. It's, um, it's something that I think everyone has ideas when they're growing up that like to do with their life. Mm. <clears throat> and I didn't really know what it was. I grew up in the bush. And uh, it was a very, by today's standards, a very simple existence. No mobile phones, um, no internet, nothing like that. No 24-hour shopping. I mean, you know, it was a very different world. Um, And I I had really no idea what I was going to do. And it was, um, and any other uh, performers who may be listening to this interview or would be performers, may share this experience. It was a school play. Yes, I have uh-huh. to admit it. The first time I was on stage and got a laugh from the audience, I thought, hey, this is a bit of all right. I wouldn't mind doing something like that. And so how um, old were you? Oh, I was about 12. Right. <laughs> and, and overacting shamelessly and um, got a laugh. And that's, that, was, that was when one possible pathway sort of mm-hmm. up and up mm-hmm. so I feel like I had a kind of similar moment mm-hmm. when I was Did you? yeah maybe when I was like 13 or so um it was school as well yes and I was in drama and we had to 
we had to make a film and someone passed me the iPad and they were like, all right, we, we want you to shoot this. And all of a sudden it's like a light bulb just flicked on in my head. It was just like, oh, I'll put the camera here and I'll put this here. I've uh, never experienced anything look, like that. The lights before. there, the mics, and mm -hmm. we're in business. Yeah, and like, like it was, it just felt so natural. Do you feel like you had like a kind of like, what was the feeling like when, when you heard those laughs? Uh, I thought, oh, that, I've never felt anything like that in my life. Let's go. Mm -hmm. It was just wonderful. Much as you did, mm. I think. And, uh, and how did it turn out? How was the, the production, the iPad production? I mean, I, I, <laughs> I think if I looked at it today, I, I have my, my, um, my head in my hands. But I think mm -hmm. I, it was, I spent all weekend editing that film. I think we, we would have shot it on the Friday or Thursday and spent all weekend um, on my computer making it like as cool as it could be. And I remember I was fascinated because I had got the 20th Century Fox introduction from YouTube <laughs> yes. and put it in, at the front of the film. And I was so amazed that I was like, oh, they have that in, in the real movies. And then I've got that I, in my film. I, that's, that's amazing. Um, I hope yeah. you've still got it. I, I would need to find it. I would need to you, find you it. You must keep it because 20 or 30 years time or more when you're reflecting on your career, you think this is where it started. Mm. Mm. And thanks to, uh, thanks to iPads and so on, it'll be around somewhere. Hopefully somewhere, mm. <laughs> hopefully somewhere. Um, and so when you kind of had that, that mm. moment at the, the theater play. Yes, that was, uh, that was actually in boarding school because, uh, as I mentioned, we, we were lived in the country and there wasn't a secondary school nearby and so my parents made the decision which, which they were worried about and were never entirely happy about, but yeah. they sent my sister and, and me to boarding school. So, uh, so I was in boarding school and that it, not only was it exciting hearing the laughter, but I kind of felt liberated. I sort of felt freed. Oh, you know, I've got... got an outlet here, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um, so that's that's where the the passion for that sort of thing came from. Uh, it went a f through a few changes along the way, um, but I was very lucky because my parents um, they didn't mind that I'd chosen something impossible for a career. I'm sure they probably thought, "Oh, what are you thinking?" But they were encouraging, and they said if it's going to make you happy, mm. um, and if you're going to make, maybe make other people happy or laugh or whatever, um, be of service, then go for it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's worth doing. Yeah. So I didn't have any opposition at all from the family. I was lucky. Yeah, that's like very, very lucky. Yes. And would you, would you say that that support network was, was so like, crucial to where you are today? Absolutely. And families, and loved ones and mentors are just so important in any career, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, having their support, my, my, my parents were really quite wonderful. They were very um, encouraging. Mm -hmm. And whatever they may have thought privately, they, you know, they were always there. That's beautiful. Mm, it's lovely. Do you remember, like, when you told them that that's what you wanted to do? I can remember telling my dad, I'm not quite sure of where we were, but I can remember telling my dad, mm. uh, look, I'm thinking of doing this for a living. And uh, he said, he thought about it and said, well, if you're, you know, if you're very keen on it, why not? Mm. If, if, if you have the talent for it, you may not have the talent for it, <laughs> but if you have. <laughs> so, uh, so that was what happened. So after school, uh, when school finished, when I graduated, I, um, I, I applied to NIDA, which is an acting, mm -hmm. acting school in Sydney. I, I grew up in Queensland, by the way, mm -hmm. so got a job, moved to Brisbane, got a job, applied to NIDA, got accepted in NIDA, but I was also doing all sorts of auditions. Whenever anyone was casting for something, I'd roll up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I did, a, a, did some voiceovers and some acting for the ABC. Uh, in those days they had local productions and, uh, you know, used to employ people to uh, do radio plays and things. And uh, so, I, you know, I was sort of kept busy doing that. Working during the day, got a job. Mm -hmm which is really important, what, pay the bills. What were you doing? Oh, gosh, it's the sort of thing you'd 
that they don't have those sort of jobs anymore. It was a clerical job. Right. Now, I'm not quite sure what, cler- what clerks did in those days, but I know it was, <laughs> there was a lot of, you know, there was, we had a, the occasional typewriter, mm. <laughs> but no computers or anything mm. like that. They hadn't been invented yet, cut it out. Um, and I think, I don't know quite what we did, but we managed to fill in the day and then yeah. I'd be off to auditions at night time and it was great fun. Yeah. And, and um, you know, paying the bills thanks to, uh, thanks to my daytime job, just paying the bills because mm. it was, uh, you know, it was not mm. hugely well paid, but it was good fun and, and actually it was sort of part of that survival thing. You have to sort of try and manage everything, manage your budgets and, for sure. and for sure. you know, do some networking, mm-hmm. uh, which I've now realised is so important. Exactly. And I'm sure you've done. Have you done that? Yeah. Have you, I think like we, um, I I feel like I'm doing a similar thing to what your you you did. So I work a day job and I need to yeah I need to make sure I make my rent and make sure Uh, yes yes my petrol money and all that oh yes and then and insurance oh Mm -hmm. don't forget that (laughs) registration oh my gosh and don't get booked because that's Mm -hmm. going to be a big fine yes I know all those things you're right so I I, um, work a day job but as soon as I clock off. It's go, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's all systems go, yes. it's just trying to make something yes. work, you know, yes. um, and I feel like you need to find that balance of that when, you, when you're passionate about something or if you're studying or something like that, it's mm. about going, I'm making sure I'm, I can live, yep. you know what I mean, and then, especially right. as a young person, have enough money to go out on a Saturday and, oh, and yes. make sure you enjoy yourself. Oh, absolutely. Um, but also... <laughs> I must say these days though, all-nighters are, no, a thing of the past. <laughs> Yeah, Especially sure. since COVID, when I think we're all staying home a lot more yeah, these days. Yeah, I mean, I for sure. Mm. But I, I, I'm interested when you decided to to leave from Queensland and mm. and and pursue acting and, and performing. Yeah, yes. How how old were you? Um, that's a fabulous question. I think I must have been about eighteen. Wow. Something like that. Um, I I got accepted for NIDA, mm. but. One of the ABC producers said, look, um, you know, I don't think you're going to actually... Maybe acting isn't for you. Mm. I don't think I was very good, actually. <laughs> and, uh, but he said, look, broadcasting, you know, radio, television. And uh, so I was able to transition. That was, mm. It was a bit of a disappointment at the time. I yeah. thought, but, but I'm going to be an actor. I'm going to... And then I thought, no, actually, maybe... Maybe it's better to do something that's more likely to succeed. For sure. Mm. How, how did you, like, that's, I would be pretty, like, put down after that. You know, mm. you, you, like, making such a journey and then someone going, hey, I don't think this is for you. Mm. Maybe do this, though. How, like, how did you take that? Did it take time to kind of process that? or? That's a great question. Um, I think it was an exercise in being resilient mm. um, and in the industry I work in, you'd need to be resilient mm-hmm. because there's, you know, there's changes and setbacks and career advancements and all sorts of things along the way. Mm-hmm. So you just need to adapt to whatever it is. Yeah. And if there are disappointments, deal with them. Mm-hmm. Say, right, oh, you get that, let's move on, see what's next. Yeah. So like, I suppose <coughs> um, being okay with failing, mm. uh, well, not necessarily just like failing true, but like hearing news that you don't want to hear mm. um, but also maybe there's always like something else on the other side you know what I mean and, and exactly. seeing that through exactly and I think what are the, the statistics on like most people today have like how many different career changes that's it's right. like such a normal thing that's right that there's a people in my that I've grown up with and have changed their career path so many different times yes. that you're going to be open to it you know yes. what I mean I, um, I must say I'm <laughs> I'm celebrating 50 years wow. with my employer and people say 50 years how did you how did you stay in the one place for that length of time is it, is this a lack of ambition but but you know the wonderful thing about I work in media and the wonderful thing about it is it's a constantly changing landscape mm. uh, and I work in news in particular and that also is constantly changing always interesting it's very easy to become sort of habituated to reading every paper that comes out uh, on, online, of course, um, and keeping up with stories and the news cycle and all that sort mm. of thing. So so even though it's been 50 years, it doesn't feel like it. Yeah, I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure. And so 
you were told that maybe broadcasting. Yes. What was it? Did you have that similar kind of light bulb moment to when, or like that kind of like liberation moment you spoke of before when you were yes. performing, when you were in the, when you were broadcasting for the first time? Yes. And the funny thing is the broadcasting job happened because of the acting work. So mm. it, it worked actually extremely well. So um, the, the radio station that I got my first media job, full-time job with, were looking for somebody who was young, they could pay almost nothing and train from scratch. Mm. And uh, uh, they uh, went to one of the theatres where I'd done, you know, done some acting and said, who, have you got somebody who fits the bill? And they put my name forward. I went and uh, I didn't even really have to audition. I just met the station manager and he said, mm, OK, give it a go. Mm. And it was wonderful. It was glorious. It was, um, it was a real eye-opener. And mm. I just loved it. Do you remember your first time like broadcasting? On air. Yeah. <laughs> I was very nervous. Um, the radio was OK because, you know, you can sort of hide. Uh, <laughs> within... Uh, I think about within 12 months I'd auditioned for a, an ABC job and um, this was in Brisbane and was accepted as a, as a broadcaster so you, you might, one day you might be introducing a, a symphony orchestra, a con a, you know, a concert on stage or reading the news on TV because it, it wasn't sort of the same presenter every night in those days. Mm. And I, my first television news bulletin was on a Sunday night. And I thought it went really well. <laughs> I would think that, wouldn't I? And people at home said, look, um, my family said, um, yes, um, we could see how nervous you were, though, because your hands were shaking with the papers. <laughs> so, so I didn't hide my nerves very well. Mm. But, uh, oh, gosh, I thought, oh, this is a bit of all right. I love it. Yeah. Um, was it, here I am all these years later <laughs> still doing the same thing. That's right, that's right. And you, you, you were moving around a lot, hey? Is Yes, Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne mm. uh, has, has been my little time in Sydney, not much, mm. and uh, then I transferred to Melbourne. So uh, as a young person pursuing a career, mm. how, did, how did you go about building a support network, building a social oh, network? It's a great around you? question and it's the most important thing you can do. Mm. Getting, having a mentor, having somebody to say, you know, actually, you're not going to be any good at this. Try that. Yeah. Um, and even just friends as well. Friends. Very much so. Such a hard thing to actually find friends. Yes. You know what I mean? And, and whose, whose values you share or who you can learn from. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's really important. And I think, I think they often happen within the industry you're working in. So even if it's a day job, mm. uh, there'll be somebody in the day job who's, who's nice, somebody in the, in, you work with who's... Yeah. enjoyable and you know who's got some something to share so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's very important and also at the moment um, it's great if you are as you are uh, a content creator mm. uh, which is the most exciting future that there is your lucky thing oh it would be <laughs> wonderful to be starting now uh, when you can generate stuff it's not not just the 20th century fox music and then the ipad <laughs> I mean, you're doing something you can create whatever you feel like. And mm. the good thing is that, that anyone today can do that. You can self-publish. Yeah. You can, there are the paths to, pathways to, to getting a big audience, whether it's on TikTok or Snapchat or whatever it is, and, um, and monetizing it. Mm. So, you know, there are, there's, there's a way to be entrepreneurial, but you will need, do, you do need a support structure around you, friendships. For sure. For sure. I think we're like, I mean, Growing up in the world of like content creation, everything's always it's normalized for all this information to be like at my fingertips and mm. at my generation's fingertips. It kind of feels like you're spoiled for choice and you can't even make a choice though. Does that make sense? Mm, yes. And I, and I think uh, yeah. It's so it's important too to. Too easy, do you think? Well, there's just there's just so much things. in everything. Yes. It's so easy to get distracted, and so those like taking you back to the bread and butter of like having people around you. I felt that can kind of be like, maybe let's just do this though. Or like, you know, grounding yourself into the real world again mm. and like spending time with people and having the phone off is so important. And that's, I feel like all the best ideas and the best conversations I've had isn't me watching a TikTok. Mm. It's, it's having it with, with one of my best friends, like mm. in person where it's mm. like, we just go on a conversation and we end, somehow end up there and then 
have a great idea. You know what I mean? Yes. I think it's so important to... I agree. To, and, to be able to turn it off at the same time. And yet, turning it off, especially when you think, I'll just watch a few more before I go to sleep. <laughs> and two hours later, you're still going. Yeah. It's so it, it does require some discipline mm-hmm, to do sure. that, especially. And as you said, in this day and age, we are you know, surrounded by, bombarded with with things to do and mm-hmm. things to entertain us and things to divert our attention. Mm. But you have to still still stay focused on your stuff. That's right, mm. that's right. And in terms of staying focused, you, how, how, how was it to be in a totally new in, in, in environment, coming from, coming from the country? Oh, yes. But like, did that shape the being in, in a different city and being in what I imagine a really loud city from where what you're used to? How did that shape the like your focus and your sense of like self-identity because as a young person you're so susceptible to change like that how, mm. how do you think you grew from that i certainly grew i'm sure of it because uh, thinking back uh, our primary school uh, was one classroom one teacher all grades prep to grade eight wow and um so most classes had one or two kids only in them so you got everybody's lessons all the time, mm. but you were meant to tune out. If you're in grade two, <laughs> just do grade two stuff. <laughs> um, and, uh, and we used to quite like it when it rained, which it doesn't do very much in the country unless, unless there's been too much of it. But uh, if there were any floods, we, were, we couldn't get to school, sometimes for two or three weeks to primary school. Wow. Oh, we just loved that. It was mm. glorious. So you're talking about th- how things were quiet back then. Yes, they were, mm. very. Uh, and then you moved to the big smoke and... You know, you've surrounded... Well, for a start, you don't know your way around a, a large city and um, you come, as I now have... I came to Melbourne in my 20s. Uh, you have the joy or the interest or the challenge of learning how this big city operates, what mm-hmm. the interests are, what, what everyone does, footy, things like that. You know, I came here not having a clue about AFL. <laughs> and the good thing is I still don't. I go along to if I do go along to a game, um, oh, you kick it up, kick it! I got no idea what the rules are, no idea at all. But it's good fun, and everyone has a good time. Yeah. So you have to kind of habituate to a new way of life and mm. new interests and mm. new things that matter, and it's wonderful. It's ex- it's exciting, but but also the unknown. You can find yourself awfulizing about it a bit. For sure. And For thinking, sure. oh gosh, what's going to happen? And probably it's not going to happen at all, the stuff that you fear. Yeah, that, that, that's so true. Mm. I feel like it's the, the fear of the unknown. And I feel like I, whenever I don't know the answers, I'll just psych myself out with all like, well, this could happen, well, this could happen, this could happen, and almost never happens. And I feel like I'm still trying to learn how to, to kind of tell myself, okay, there's a very slim chance of that happening. And don't worry about that. Just like, just focus on the mm, positives. Yes. Um, is that is that when you when you moved to the city, was it overwhelming? And how did you did you have those kind of? Those it was thoughts? overwhelming. Um, in fact, there were a couple of people along the way who were living interstate who gave me a few ideas about. Well, when you're in Melbourne, um, maybe you can look for an apartment or share house or something in this area, or you know these are the areas where you'll you'll find. Mm. opportunities to mm-hmm. you know to settle for a while and things so I got a bit of help before I arrived um, I would say for anyone who's interested in in our industry if I can claim your industry a little bit <laughs> as well but if you you don't be afraid of moving so if there's an opportunity if an opportunity comes up in Alice Springs or Broome or wherever it may be a long way from where you are but don't be frightened. Don't be frightened to take it and give it a crack, mm. uh, because there's always wonderful things. There are always wonderful people wherever you go, yeah. and things to learn and things to do. So, uh, I know it sounds a bit Pollyanna-ish, but it really is true. You know, there's, there's always stuff to do. For always sure, always things to entertain. I mean, like humans are like creatures of comfort, right? Mm, and yes. So, to to do something like that can be very, very difficult to action and actually push your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And everything that comes with it can be so, so stressful. But it sounds like you really lent um, in with people like you took advice. Yes, Um, that's right. How instrumental was that 
to your, to your journey like today? Oh gosh, absolutely. And there have been times <clears throat> along the way when I didn't have any reliable advice about things, about the way to attack things, the way mm. to do things. And I've always uh, thought I'd have done much better had I had that at the time. Mm. But you live and learn and you yeah. move on. And um, you know, some, and sometimes it is also a good idea not to over stress about things that you can't change. Mm -hmm. If you can't really change something, think, oh well, I hope it turns out well. And funny thing is, things don't always turn out somehow. Yeah. Pretty much. And so, do you, do you feel like you took that kind of mentality when you didn't have someone to turn to? Mm. You didn't have any ad advice? You made stupid mistakes, probably. <laughs> but they're so important, hey? Yes, if, except, you know, except later on you, you look back at, at what you, things you've done or said or think, oh, you've just grown and think, what was I thinking? What, you know, how stupid. But I think the idea is don't repeat them. Mm. You know, if, mm -hmm. you, if you can avoid making the same mistake twice, you're going a bit better. Yeah. That's something that my, my dad actually said to me, like, last week. And it's, stuck, it's been in my head every day since mm -hmm. where it's like it's it's good to make mistakes mistakes are like you're supposed to make them when you're yes. young but it's only if you make them twice or three times then it's a problem and as long as you're learning from them that's a good thing that's, you're supposed to do that that's very good advice for sure that's very good advice give it a crack see what happens mm -hmm. and learn from it definitely definitely because it's like i feel like you know they say that you learn the most from your actual your failures not your, your actual <laughs> yes your i think successes. that's right um so it's like so important to to do that, but it's also very important to reflect every now and then to look back and go, oh, maybe what I was so stressed about wasn't actually something I was supposed to be so stressed about. Oh, and look, that's that happens to me now. Mm. Uh, I've been, you know, things that I stress about and worry about and think, oh gosh, you know, what, what's, what's going to be the outcome here? Um, when it happens, when when whatever the situation is unfolds. It's, it's never the horrific thing you mm. feared it might be, but well, not in my case. Mm -hmm. that you, I mean, all your life you, you're, you'll be challenged and you know, there'll be doubts and self-doubts and things, but and how keep do you, on giving it a, <laughs> keep on going, doing your best, I think. For sure, you? for sure. How do, how do you, when you're, when you're in the moment of, of like stress or, or self-doubt, do you have like a routine that you do to kind of ground yourself? Great question. I I don't know that I do. I think the the breathing exercises actually. I know it's it, the breathing exercises sound too good to be true, but actually it is quite a good way of just calming the brain, stilling the brain, just saying, "All right, now just settle down," mm -hmm. and and you don't have to. In fact, you don't think about it. It, it just happens automatically from yeah. the breathing, and it stops you. You know, it settles your thinking down. Mm -hmm. So I think probably that's. That's the, the best thing I can do. And I do actually, to this day, I do the exercises, you know, just do a bit of breathing and mm. settles it down. Sometimes before the news, you have to just, you know, make sure you've got it, you know, if, if things are happening and you're not sure if the lead story's going to be there, all that sort mm. of thing. Just take a breath. I find that, like, fascinating that you, that you still employ those techniques. I oh, mean, yes. because I'm so... Like used to seeing you always so well composed on TV. Oh, you think? Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, of course. It it's like it's always so. It's it's so well put together, and to to hear you say that, it's like, that's 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 crazy to me. Um, that's very kind of you, but I tell you, <laughs> you know, there may be calm. We may be projecting calm, but at times, <laughs> underneath the surface of the water, the feet are going like that. Mm, yeah, and I think that's like, I think you know, everyone's a, like human, and so it's yes. sometimes it's so easy to to like kind of disassociate that with with, with things and and, mm. and kind of take things to face value. But yes. like, it's so important to. Like that's just like I'm still processing that now. I mean, like picturing you kind of like breathing before, oh, um, yes. and the vo vocal exercises yeah. too. There, <laughs> you made such a journey, like literally all around it, like Australia. Mm, yes, well, well, the eastern states yes, anyway, yes, Brisbane, yeah. Sydney, Melbourne. Mm -hmm. um, so that is one of the things. Don't be afraid to to move, mm. even even though it's it's horrible being away from family. Oh, that's the other thing we've got mm. to talk about. Of course, is family. Yeah, family is vital. So, so you know maintain best relationships you can with them, I reckon, and 
cherish them and cherish the people you love and tell them you love them. And mm. because when they're not here, oh, you know, it takes a lot of getting used to and you, and you sort of never do. I mean, you do, but you don't. Mm. So, you know, it's, it's part of life. But when you lose loved ones, oh boy, hard work. Yeah. Yeah, we can't insulate ourselves from such things in life. That's right. There's That's right. good stuff happens and sometimes upsetting stuff, mm -hmm. how we deal with it and process it. It takes time, mm. it takes a long time. Mm. Be patient with yourself. Yeah. You know? I mean, how instrumental was your, was your family even when you were away to, to where you are oh, today? Oh, well, <laughs> I was so lucky. I said to my late mother and my stepfather and my sister, we, they were living in, in Brisbane mm -hmm. uh, at the time. And I said, look, um, this is when I moved to Melbourne, I said, I have got a job in Melbourne and I'm really loving it. Um, well, they knew, of course, about the job because, mm -hmm. you know, they know about all this stuff along the way. You mm -hmm. read them and say, what do you think? Um, but when, the, when it happened and I moved, I said, I think this is going to be for a while. I think if you would consider it, why don't you move to Melbourne as well so we can all be within close contact with mm -hmm. one another? Not necessarily living in the same house. Yeah, yeah. It was, you know, from between teenage years, you want to be in the home. <laughs> but, um, uh, and of course, I wasn't a teenager anymore then anyway. But I said, come and live in, you know. And I was so lucky, so fortunate that I was able to do that. And for oh. the next, you know, my, it was about 30 years later that my mum passed away. So I had, the, you know, the. the that experience oh, of having time oh yes wonderful and close mm. and uh, they also fell in love with with Melbourne and you know Victoria mm. and so it's you know changed our whole life ch changed the whole family's dynamics yeah. but oh so wonderful right I find that so beautiful that like your family moved oh yes to be close with you and well. they were supported that's like that's that sounds so like beautiful oh. were, were you nervous to kind of Tell, tell them that and suggest that to them? Um, I was a bit, mm. but they they said, well, let's give it a go. Mm. You know, they're very, uh, thinking back on it, they've always been very open to ideas that, that you know, supported the family, to, mm -hmm. to, that supported one another, and always, and, and they were terrific support, a sure. built-in support structure, and to this day, you know, I, uh, you know, things that are going on, I chat with my sister about it mm -hmm. all the time every yeah. day yeah. so you know it's it's just one of those things so I'd say if you're lucky enough to have family oh don't let them out of your sight for <laughs> right. sure for sure but I think it's so important to have someone in your life that you can talk to every day or, mm. or try and find that or um, whether that's a friend or or like seeing someone professionally um, mm. and mm. like try to find those kind of connections because they're so instrumental in growth and reflection yeah. and just talking to someone else is like so important you know what I mean yeah even if like, when things are really good and it, when things are really bad sometimes yeah. when when days are just the same but it sounds like your sister is someone that's that oh, she's you. terrific yes terrific and I'm lucky too I have uh, other friends who mm -hmm. are you know equally supportive mm -hmm. but uh, I, I think that's very important for all of us you know to establish friendships and not you know not necessarily go out of our way to do it that yeah. it just happens and mm -hmm. it happens naturally yeah for sure and like allowing that process of like finding people and also, also like you're not rushing for it I think yes is, is actually really important too because yeah. I feel like at times in my life I've been like really frustrated that it's like why is there someone not here for me right now? like yes. like why I, I, right. I feel disconnected from other people I, I want to be starring in it movie what why has that happened yet <laughs> but but like but even just like with like friends just to like you know i feel like i need like i'm missing a connection in my life you know what i mean sometimes mm. and just, like not now i'm fine now <laughs> but like but there's been times of like when i was younger where it's like i feel like i need more of a support network and being frustrated with that yes it's like is a waste of energy you kind of need to step back and, and let it happen and, mm. and just put yourself out there as well and so like that's something that you're like an expert in putting yourself out there I mean, like that's what you, you've done um but when you reflect on when you reflect on the journey that you've made which is like so iconic um 
I don't know about that, but what? thank you. I'm, I'm tiling that. I'm thank you. Unapologetically, thank I'm tiling you. that. Thank you. Um, and when you reflect on that and then reflect on young people, to, um, what they're doing today, and what advice would you give people that might be in the same shoes as you? Um, okay, great. <clears throat> so much. Um, self-belief. And don't be, don't be um, discouraged or feel invalidated if somebody, if you go for a job or go for a role or go for something and you don't get it, instead of, you know, feeling like the end of the world has arrived, just think, oh, okay, hmm. oh, well, that's their, that's their loss. I'm going to show them and, you know, mm -hmm. use it to move on. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, it's about being resilient and, and follow your dreams, you know. It's like you being a filmmaker. When, when you told your dad, what, mm. what did he, how did he take the news, was he? It's, it's something that, um, it's taken a while to come around to that. I mean, I mean, out of love, you know, he at first wasn't too sure. As a, as a father, you just want the best for your children. Yes. Right? Um, but there's been, I can't lie, there's been moments where I get to share my, my successes with him like today where it's like, I'm talking to you. <laughs> and it's like, and to, to see his reaction with that and him being really proud of me, that's what's, oh, that's that's what's special, you know what I mean? That um, is so lovely. Mm. I wish he was here actually. Yeah, yeah. Would, that would be really cool, hey? Yeah. But you, you speak on like resilience. And... Yes, resilience, um, be optimistic. Mm -hmm. um, the sky isn't falling, <laughs> the end of the world. Well, it's not, it may be nigh, but it's not really that <laughs> nigh, so give it a crack, mm -hmm. keep going for it. Mm -hmm and enjoy what you do and, and, you know, do other stuff as well. So, you know, it doesn't hurt to suddenly become really good at golf or tennis or rowing or swimming or doing other things, you know, mm. there's lot, lot, lots of other things to do in life. So keep them going, self-publish. Uh, if you get an opportunity, mm. keep, you know, have a, have a current CV so that, so that if, if, if a, uh, somebody comes along and you can give them a, de a, a reel, uh, yeah. you know, if you've got a reel of your work. Mm -hmm. um, all of those things, just, you know, just look for opportunities, mm. I think. So it sounds like be open and kind of trust the process a little bit. Yes, I th uh, yes, trust the process mm. because things, you know, somebody will eventually realise, hey, you've got the talent for this, you should be doing that. And sometimes that even comes internally, hey. Sometimes yes. you really need someone to tell you that yes. you can find that within yourself. Yes. Which I feel like is the most, like, that's the best person. <laughs> that's the best, that's you know the I mean? most validation. Mm -hmm. For sure. I agree. For sure. Yes, I agree. So when you start making, uh, I'm, I'm not sure yet, I'm, I'm making this decision for you, but <laughs> when you start making Hollywood features or features that are, you know, worldwide release, um, uh -huh. uh, do please let me know if there are any casting calls because I, I, I always say this to filmmakers because I know your career one day will have you looking for someone to play the role of the, the butler or something. So, hey, yeah. you're on the top of the list to play the role of the butler. <laughs> I promise you oh, that. Oh, you'll be sorry. I <laughs> promise you that. Well, um, thank you for today. It has been lovely chatting with you. I, I've loved it. Thank you. I'm sorry. Okay, Did sure. I turn it into an interview where I interviewed you? No, it's, it's, like, it's been such a lovely chat. It's been such a lovely chat. And I think I've taken away a lot of things um, from this conversation that I know I'm really looking forward to kind of implementing it in my own life. So thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And I'm very honored to have been interviewed. Thank you. It's a wonderful part.